Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And before we talk about today's guest, I just figure I should plug away. If you want more passive income in your life, go to thelandgeek.com. Download for free the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook, How to Avoid Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes. And of course, get our over 100 podcasts delivered each week um, to you in the free membership site. But more than important in my plugs is my co-host, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating the Craigslist postings, I have no reason, I have no, no, no logical reason why you're not doing that. Go to postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm awesome. How are you? Pulse is normal. Respiration is fine. I'm really excited about today's guest because it's all about one of my favorite words. So these, these are my three favorite words. It's going to be automation, free, and cash flow. And today's guest is all about cash flow. I, I'm excited, man, because uh, not, not only is he talking about cash flow, but... I think he's a famous rapper too, isn't he? He, he <laughs> might be. He might be. So today's guest is a famous South African rapper, MC Laubscher <laughs> from CashflowNinja.com. MC Laubscher is a wealth strategist, educator, and financial freedom fighter. He's the founder and president of Valhalla Wealth Financial and host of the popular business and investing podcast, Cashflow Ninja. His mission is to help as many people as possible eliminate the control banks and financial institutions have over their lives by building their wealth in a variety of ways outside of Wall Street. He believes the best way to achieve this is in the information age, and it's by reclaiming a banking function in your own financial life. We're going to talk a lot about this banking function, MC, uh, through structuring an efficient cash flow management system and creating a new system. And creating and building assets provide multiple streams of income. You know what? This is like hitting all my, my spots. I, I couldn't be more excited about this. All right. So MC Lobster, how are you? Very well in yourself. Thank you so much for having me on the show, guys. Yeah. I think the art of passive income listeners are going to be, this is going to be a treat, MC. What do you think, Scott? I think so too. I think, uh, you know, Especially if, uh, especially if we can hit on all those topics, automation, cash flow, all that good stuff. This is a home run. All right, let's let's just let's just skip the pleasantries, MC. <laughs> all right, what the, what the heck happened? When did you wake up and say, you know what, Wall Street not great, right? But there's this thing called a banking function that is great. Can you kind of elaborate on that? Yeah, I mean, so my background is in real estate management and investment, and I actually uh, started my real estate career right out of uh, university and uh, got involved in real, uh, real estate, did everything from turning around apartments, property management, leasing, uh, to eventually having my broker's license and uh, being part of an acquisition group. I think through my experience and being an investor myself, it really opened my eyes to uh, the financial system as a whole, uh, the banking industry. And like a lot of people, um, unfortunately, <laughs> I kept finding out more and more about it during the 2008 crisis. So uh, after that, I looked at as many ways possible and obsessively researched many different uh, types of ways to build my wealth outside of the system. Real estate obviously being a fantastic tool, but I always looked at more ways uh, to use the same dollar over and over. And I came across the strategy that's actually been used by many, many individuals for quite some time. Uh, some of the wealthiest families uh, use the strategy. Uh, even the banks and financial institutions actually use the strategy as well. So um, I think that process of awakening really opened my eyes to what was going on. I knew that was something wrong early on as I started my journey. And uh, 2008 was, uh, was a big wake up call. Um, I'm sure just not for me, but for many of the listeners out there too. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, Scott Todd, if you read any Michael Lewis book, right, or not any Michael Lewis book, if you read Liar's Poker, you read The Big Short, or it was it Flash Traders? Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. he, makes, he makes literally argument after argument after argument. Wall Street is not in our best interest. And yet, it continues to thrive. It continues to flourish. I don't understand it. Right? We all know it's, it's a big casino. <laughs> it's rigged for like these big investment banking firms, right, Scott? You know, it's yeah, it's, and it's kind of scary too because you know, like I, I I have some unique perspectives working from a Fortune 500 company, Fortune 300 company, and not not only in that one, but I've seen other ones where, uh, you know, the companies they they go out and they do everything they can to hit a quarterly number, and you know they they don't always make the best decisions for the shareholders because they're trying to, to juggle many things. That's why when I think of like uh, Amazon, for example, you know, a- Amazon, they don't really live by the quarter goal of this is what we have to do this quarter. I think it's, you know, it's better structured, but that, that's, a, that's a unicorn because most companies are trying to hit that quarterly number. They're trying to get that spike in the, you know, keep the analysts happy. They're trying to get the spike in the, the stock price. Uh, their bonuses are, are wrapped around that stock. The, you know, the, there's a lot of things that go into that and they're not always to the benefit of the shareholders. Right. So MC, we're sold. So now <laughs> you've got a solution. So tell us a little bit more in detail about this solution. Yeah. So what I found was I was looking for a vehicle, uh, being a cash flow investor um, that loves investing in assets and uh, businesses that produces income streams. I looked at vehicles where I can actually warehouse my wealth because I really don't trust the banking system. And just to throw it in there too, if anybody uh, wishes to look more into the Dodd-Frank Act and what is actually in there about the banks (laughs) right now, I think you'll understand why I do that because uh, there's a lot of bail-in provisions in there. There's actually some provisions in there that the FDIC could recapitalize banks uh, in case of the next meltdown with your deposits. So, um, but do your own research on that. I looked, did my own research. I don't feel comfortable warehousing my wealth there. So I looked at, you know, from a modeling standpoint, what do the richest families in the world actually do? Where do they warehouse their wealth? Where, where do a lot of uh, investors warehouse their wealth? And I found it was actually in mutual insurance companies. And the vehicle that a lot of these families use actually in family offices is dividend paying whole life insurance with mutual insurance companies. Now, the first time I read that or heard that I I fell off my chair, Um, but actually looking more into it and looking at some of the reasons why they do that um, was really an eye opener. So the first thing is this is not uh, I have to say too, this is dividend paying whole life insurance with a mutual company structured a very, very specific way. So not your average whole life insurance vehicle that's out there. It's actually based on a concept and a strategy called the infinite banking concept that was popularized by Mr. Nelson Nash. And he actually wrote a book, Becoming Your Own Banker on it. But the reason that these families and individuals and a lot of uh, investors use it is the first thing that it's private. It's a private contract between you and the insurance company. The second thing is it does offer some asset protection, which for real estate investors is huge because our society unfortunately is very litigious and it will become increasingly more litigious moving into the future. Then some of the other things too is there's actually a guarantee portion growth on your money that you put inside these vehicles. And it's structured in a way to maximize your cash value. Um, And then, of course, protect insurable interest. But the main focus being on your cash value, there's a a guaranteed interest that this grows every single year. Then there's also uh, the the opportunity to participate in dividends from these companies. Now, mutual insurance companies, some of them have been around since the mid-1800s. And most of them are extremely profitable, very well capitalized because unlike stock companies, they're not listed on the stock, in, on the stock market. 
and they actually manage their company and affairs with an extremely long range vision for the profitabilities of the shareholders, which you're one if you have a policy with them. So these guys then, when they are profitable, pay dividends to their shareholders, which is huge. And most of these companies have paid dividends through the Great Depression, <laughs> through market crashes, economic recessions, depressions, etc. The other thing is the growth inside these vehicles is tax free and the distribution through techniques and strategies is also tax free. So it's a vehicle that offers the growth and the distribution. Now here's why it dovetails really well with being a cash flow investor and what, which really was interesting for me is when you borrow money and that's how you access money from these companies is you do it through policy loans. But when you borrow money from a mutual insurance company as a shareholder, it's not borrowed from your cash value. It is borrowed from the general account from the mutual insurance company as a separate transaction, which is quite huge because now you've built up your cash value on the one side, your money is growing at a predictable rate, tax-free, having the opportunity to participate in dividends. And on the other side, you actually get to leverage this, the, your cash value that's in there, and utilize that to invest in real estate, businesses, family emergencies, et cetera. So your money is working on in, in two different areas at the same time. So real estate investors, love liquid, uh, being liquid or having access to capital, building, uh, building up cash value in vehicles such as these, and then allowing it to leverage it and create more income streams for you is something that sold me. Um, and one of the questions that, some, that, that I had when I looked at this, I said, wait a second. I mean, you know, my personal philosophy is everybody around the table has to win. I'm extremely skeptic <laughs> because I know uh, kind of, you know, what goes on in Wall Street, you know? So I looked at this and it was very, very obvious for me that the life insurance company, the mutual insurance company had their best in interest and your interest in the same, in, in the same alignment because the, the loans that they allow you to go and leverage your wealth and create more wealth is secured by your cash value, number one, but also your death benefit. So these companies are extremely well run. That's why Warren Buffett actually calls them some of the best businesses in, on the planet and why he invests in a lot of them. So very well managed and well run. They're protected on the one side and they also allow you to access your money through, through your entire wealth building process to go and leverage it and create more wealth for yourself. I've actually heard of the strategy through Paul Harmon, um, a shift warrior. I don't know if you've heard of Paul. He's, in, he's a big money guy in Austin. Um, and now he's got a, like a private equity group. But um, my question to MC is, why doesn't everyone do this? Who's this not for? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very, very, I mean, the, one of the reasons is it ties into your earlier question. I just think that we're bombarded with, a lot of information out there um, since the way that Wall Street is set up. I mean, uh, most of these, most of the media companies in this country is they're all listed. And now almost, I think it's six that owns over 90% of them. There's another merger on the way. Um, most of these companies are listed on the stock, uh, stock exchanges. Um, so their interests are aligned between advertising and so forth. So it's not necessarily knowledge and information that's out there. I think once you look at it, it could be for a family that's just starting and building a solid financial foundation because they have ready capital that's liquid. If something should happen to them, they could save for retirement in these. They could save for their children's college. I, actually, a lot of what I do is uh, planning for college funding and uh, very effective ways of how to pay for that. Um, these, as I mentioned, they're private contracts. They don't actually count as far as college planning with FAFSA. So this doesn't count it as, a, as an asset for the parents in them. And you can access your money, unlike a lot of the other Wall Street vehicles at any time. 
because it's your money <laughs> and you can actually do with it what you would like to do with your own money. Very interesting concept. But um, yeah, and then as far as investors, amazing benefits. I love real estate. I love this approach to real estate, having my money um, and leveraging it and creating more income streams. You can actually use this for business. I started, I funded my business with this. Um, I leveraged the cash value inside of my policy to start my business. I actually, I have more than one policy. I have three of these in, in my wealth plan personally, but I actually used one of them to uh, fund my podcast as well. And so it's part of my cash flow management system. And I know you love automation and you love systems and processes. And that's the way I think the I think we lost him. We lost I think him. we lost MC. MC got frozen there. Biggest he's challenge for people. Oh, now he's back. Oh. oh, sorry. We, we lost you yeah, there for a second. Keep, keep going. Keep going. Oh, okay. Um, is there a specific point that you want me to start and that you guys lost me? At systems and processes. Oh, okay. Um, most people, when I mention life insurance, they don't think in systems and processes and automation. They think of it as life insurance. And I could say the same thing. I say, guys, there's real estate, there's businesses, there's commodities like gold, silver, oil. You know, there's digital Damn. assets. Yeah, there's, there's paper assets. These are all just vehicles. I mean, you know, can somebody buy a property and go broke? Absolutely. It's all about the strategy of how you invest in that property or that, that piece of real estate. And the same is for utilizing a vehicle that has an insurance component to it. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? So like, okay, how much does it cost me to get going? Like, I'm going to do this. I clearly, I, I got I to gotta have some cash value into a retirement or a life insurance account before I can start going pulling money out. So, you know, like how much do I really need to, to get going with a program like this? Very good question. Um, so what, what we do and what I love about this is you can get really creative with it just that you, so that you can with real estate. And how I plan with helping investors uh, implement this is we look at your goals. What's the timeline for a property that you want to purchase? This is relative for everyone. For everyone. I mean, some guys want to go and buy a property right now. Some guys want to buy a property in two or three years. Uh, some, some guys, I'm actually working with someone that he has a huge student loan debt, but we figured out a way as he's saving to eventually wipe off his student loan debt that he can build up some cash value in this to leverage to grow his own business and invest in real estate. I can give you an example of, of someone that I've helped uh, set this up with. And I, and I know your question is too, what's the minimum? Some of these plans can be set up for around $300 per month, which is $3,600 uh, a year. So um, it's a strategy and a vehicle that's there that you can use and implement in your own life on a smaller scale. As I mentioned, some wealthy families do this. The Rockefellers have similar strategies in their family office, but you don't have to be a Rockefeller to, <laughs> to implement this. Um, but the example that I'll, that I'll use is there was someone that wanted to purchase a property in about three years. So we figured out uh, a plan, obviously took a holistic look at his financial picture. Um, this is not cookie cutter Wall Street stuff that I'm gonna ask you what your risk, risk tolerance is and then sell you mutual funds. We look at it and we tailor it to you. We put it together. So I think I'm just gonna use round numbers, but let's say for example, the, the, the property that he wanted to purchase at the time was about $100,000 and he wanted to buy this, this cash. Um, but he also needed some money to fix this up uh, and hold until he has a renter in there to generate income streams. So wh what we were able to do is fund the policy. You could take the money outside of the policy and purchase the property cash and then use $20,000. So there was 120 in there. Use $20,000 to uh, do aesthetic uh, fixing up maybe small things here and there and then actually uh, hold it for 45 days, I think, was it till the renter was in? And then you start paying back the policy with your extra cash flow. 
these loans are very, very flexible because again, they're covered. You, you know, you, your death benefit is there, which they're going to draw the money from and your cash value. So they're hedged. You set the payback terms. Um, I've used one of these policies for um, my personal real estate reserve account. So I bought the property before I, uh, um, before I set up that, that policy. And what I did was I set up the policy. Every month, my cash flow flows in there. It builds up the reserves. And as you guys know, with real estate, when it rains, it pours, right? So in one year, this property was doing really well for me up until that time. Things started to break down. And I had to, I had to just uh, do some updates on it anyway for my renters. So I could access the funds, do the upgrades. I threw in a, a washer and a dryer in there as well, did some electrical work. And from the added cash flow from the fixing up and the upgrades, um, I could charge more rent. So I had more, obviously more money coming in and then I just paid back the, the policy. But, okay, so, okay, so let, let's, let's, let's say I wanted to, let's say I wanted to do this and I, I want to go simple. Like I, I want to buy a car, $30,000 car, right? Yep. And I want to, I want to be my own banker. So what I would do is I would go and I would, I would come to someone like you, open up this account. I would take, let's say $30,000, I would put it into this account. I could withdraw it within a short period of time that I could go and begin buying a car. I could buy a car and pay myself as if I was the bank. Fair? Yes, there's a little bit of cloudiness on that because um, I've seen people write certain things on the internet about it. Um, the first thing is it, you're reclaiming the banking function right. in your own financial life. And I just want to add that because a lot of people think I'm going to start my own bank and that's not the case. Yeah, yeah, okay. You're utilizing yeah. this vehicle. And the other thing is the policy loan, for instance, in your example for the car, the $30,000, that's that's from the general account from the insurance company. So it's not as if you borrow the money from yourself and pay yourself back. Right. You pay the insurance company back. But because you're a shareholder in the, in the mutual insurance company, you do directly participate in the profitability, which a lot of these policy loans are very profitable for them. That's why they have them. Right. Um, so you do get to participate indirectly in those, in, in, in basically the money and the interest that you're paying back, okay. does that make sense? Right, so is it, is it a one for one um, you know, ratio or is it a 80-20 ratio so that if I put in $30,000, can I borrow 30 or is it 30, I put in 30 but I can borrow 25? So it is a, it is some, and I'll just say this, there's a lot of different companies. I've, uh, I'm, I'm working with three different vendors just with my three loans and, and my plans, they're all different. But I will say this, if you, most of them have you borrow up until almost the cash value of it. So if you fund it, obviously there's a life insurance uh, portion of it, but say hypothetically there's $30,000 in there. Most of them, and I say most, and again, it's all relative, will get, have you borrow up to, up until right about that threshold up there. Okay. So I, I see. So like, um, so like I, I have a, I have a whole life policy with a, with a company. It's not a huge yeah. one. So if anybody's listening, you're not going to get anything. Uh, but, <laughs> but like, I think, I think the policy is like in this example, I think it's like 20. And I think that the cash value is like six. And I think this is a mutual company like you're talking about because it, the, the way it's worded and everything. So if that's the case, then I could not borrow from the whole 20, which is the, the life insurance component, but I can go borrow the cash value of it almost almost dollar for dollar that I can do deals with. And then I'm paying that back, but that cash value doesn't get touched per se because I'm borrowing from the general fund of the, the insurance company. I'm paying back the insurance company, the interest, but because I'm an owner, you know, cause it's mutual, then I share in the profitability that that does come back into my life insurance account, thus growing the cash value. 
That's correct. And it sounds by, yeah, just by listening to it, it, it could be just uh, basically a traditional whole life policy. So what we do, and not to get too into too much technical detail, but we add riders to these contracts that really accelerate the cash growth. I will, however, say this. This is not a get rich quick scheme for anybody listening that out, that's out there. It is, however, a very disciplined way to save and warehouse your wealth in a well-capitalized institution that you can leverage and have it work as many times possible for you. So I'd like to capture my wealth. I use the term, it's a wealth capture strategy because I'm... I think we lost MC again, huh? All right, so it's a wealth capture strategy. I'm, I'd be curious about the friction on this. Yeah, yeah. That's, All right, MC, we lost you again. Sorry about that, guys. Um, uh, so, yeah. no, that's okay. Well, you know, Scott and I are, are wondering about the friction of all of this. Let's say that, you know, I've got a deal locked up. How quickly can I get my money? How quickly can I move on this? Um, MC's locked up again. Yeah. You know, I think that's the, that's the thing, too, is like, you know, when, when you look at some of the other stuff that's out there, Mark, it's, I mean, it's speed, right? You know, the fact that I can get, get it overnight, I can get that check overnight, or I can get it tomorrow, or I can get it right now if I need be. I mean, that's really the, that's really the, the uh, difficult piece there. What I like about this is that um, once you get that thing set up and once you have the cash value growing to where you can do deals like this, what's, what's, I think what's fantastic is that it doesn't matter if I take control over the money and then pay it back from the cash flows, right? Because as an example, you know, if we look at like a self-directed IRA, I can't touch that money at all. Like my buyer can't give me a down payment. They can't make their monthly payment to me. It all has to go through my self-directed IRA or my QRP. It, I, it's hands off, right? Like I can't touch it at all. Um, right, right. So, you know, the, the fact that I can take something like this program and, you know, take possession of the cash, refund it, pay back my own loan, there is something there that uh, should be there. But like you said, if the, if the friction is there or if it's a long-term process to get going, then it's not going to work. Yeah, I mean, it won't work necessarily for our niche. And flipping niche or our model, but I could see the benefits of say bigger deals and um, you know, and you, you can't argue with the tax free benefits. Oh yeah. I, that's, that's like phenomenal, right? It's amazing. It's amazing. It, it, it is amazing, Mark. Like when you look at whether it's uh, the QRP or, or this, how many vehicles are out there that make deals, you know, cash, cash, for, uh, cash, tax free, <laughs> tax free. It's amazing how many ways that you can like grow stuff tax free. It's amazing that, I mean, that kind of explains why some, some people haven't paid taxes in years. I, yeah, I know. I know. I mean, not, me, know, not me, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course not you. No, no I'm, if you're listening, IRS, it's I'm the not biggest, Scott. I'm the we're, biggest we're, tax we're sucker there is, man. Um, you know, and you know, it's interesting that this stuff, the QRP, the infinite banking model that, you know, it is, it is not in conventional wisdom. You're not going to go on Yahoo Finance and see an article on this. You're not going to go on CNN, right? Mainstream media, you won't see this in the, like the Motley Fool, right? It is not in their interest to talk about this stuff because yeah. nobody benefits from it. Yeah. It's really, it's really kind of weird in, in that, you know, I don't know. It's a marketing issue. Yeah. You know, what's funny though is, is, um, I've noticed lately, and maybe he's been doing it for a long time, but, you know, Grant, Grant Cardone, he's been ranting about, you know, like the, the, uh, the fact that 401ks and, and buying a house, all of that stuff is, is ridiculous. It's, it's middle-class lies. There is no middle-class. I mean, he, he's been going on rants now for, I don't know, all of 2016, maybe even before that. And it's funny because as you look at some of the stuff he's saying, he's like, you know, don't invest in the 401k, don't invest. And to a, to a degree, I think that when you get outside of that, I mean, when, when I worked in a corporate shop and that's really all that you were given access to is this 401k, it's not the best deal. You know, the best deal is when, and this is covered like in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, 
is when you get to the other side of the quadrant where you're the business owner or the investor, man, that's where the, that's where the better tax deals are. You're taxed differently. You're taxed on your profit, not necessarily on your income. And I think you get access to, to vehicles like the QRP or this that really allow you to break out of the, that middle class or to break out of that whole thinking. Yeah, I mean, when you, when you look at real wealth in this country, it always comes down to business owners, right? Um, and <laughs> I think it's, well, I, you know, it's real estate investors, business owners, um, money managers, and, uh, and high paid, you know, let's say professionals, right? Yeah. Like right. Your, your plastic surgeons, yeah. your high paid doctors, and your high paid lawyers. Everyone else is kind of, out there, right? They're out there, right? They're, uh, yeah, they're just they're 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 doing the conventional thing, which is working really hard at a job, paying taxes, but they get left over. They're trying to save. Yeah, they're putting it in somewhere, and they're just spinning that roulette wheel, hoping that Tesla goes up, <laughs> that mutual fund goes up, that four hundred one k goes up. It is not a way, no, it's not a savvy way to get wealthy. You can get lucky. Yeah. You, you're not going to get, it's not a, it is not a conscientious plan. Right? I'll tell you when, when I see a stock and it, you and I were talking about this a few weeks ago, like when I see a stock that's dropped, you know, 30% in a month. Okay. Literally. And I, I showed you the example, 30% in a month. And there's been no change in the fundamentals of that company that, that have been released uh, to the public, you know, and when, what I mean is that there's been no announcements from the company that they're, uh, that they're, that they're going to miss earnings. There's nothing, but yet that stock has gone down 30% in value. I don't know how, you know, a, an individual investor like myself or anybody else can, can ride that storm. I mean, you've got, you've got hedge funds and you've got these large institutions that are able to literally sink a stock just by exiting it and selling. And it could just be that they're, they're done with their cycle on it. They've had the growth that they wanted or lack of growth. They need to free up their money for the, you know, for this year. And then they, they clear out. And, and I mean, like there's a companies that, I mean, you and I, we don't like to lose money, but you get, you start to get into like some of these larger hedge funds and you start to get into some of these larger mutual funds. This is the time of the year that they start dumping those stocks because they'll dump them and they'll take the, the tax loss against those stocks that perform very well for them. Right. And um, so I don't know how you and I as individual investors, you know, ma manage through that. Yeah. You know, um, MC is probably going to jump on here. I, I forgot that I locked this meeting. Um, <laughs> you know, and this is the, the, the main reason why as an investor for me, if I want to be totally passive, this is why I'm buying notes. Right. Yeah. Because it's the asset I understand the most. Right. I can make 12%. I don't have to do anything. And I can do it on my QRP. And I'm buying your notes. Yeah. And I'm making 12% tax-free. There's nothing better for me. Yeah. Literally. And, we, and like we, before this call, we were talking about this, this note that's a beautiful note. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to perform very well for someone. No, it's $1,000. We got $1,000 $1, down. $1,000 down. $14 a month. Yeah, six, six fourteen a month. And, uh, you, you know, you go to sell that note and, and then it's backed up by people that know what they're doing. Ah, oh, it's a beautiful note for somebody to so sit back and earn 12%. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. If they can do it in a vehicle, like a self-directed IRA or a QRP right. and they get the because, tax benefits of what it. Is that? So, you know, if you're not 12%, it's, it's more, it's. Yeah. It's, uh, Cause there's no tax. Well, so it's another 30% on top of that. So it's uh, what, 12 times 1.3. Oh well, yeah, 15, 15, almost 16%. It's not bad. Not bad. I'll not take bad it. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. Well, we're at that point in the podcast, Scott Todd. I've got a, I've got a good tip of the week. And I'm this is for, tip of the week. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got it. I, I, this one, I, uh, I think that anybody who's in our audience that's, that's like trying to like come up with ways that they can teach a VA how to do something. I mean, you, you use mind maps all the time, Mark. I mean, that's kind of your go-to model. And, you know, like, I know you have software on your machine. I've got some software, but what about a free solution? I mean, free, right? Check out 
B U B B L dot U S bubbles. All right, I'm gonna, oh, I've heard, I've seen this. BBL dot U S brainstorming made easy. Yeah. Dot U S bubble. Yeah. bubble. Oh, I, lo- I love this. I love this company. Yeah. I'm, and, I'm using my node on the Mac. But this is better because this is web-based. Web-based. So you can, you can share it. Uh, I mean, obviously like anything, there's different, different levels of, um, of access. You know, they've got like a team level or whatever, but as, as we start to do more things with uh, like group learning, you know, like that we're doing now, right. things like this that can be web-based and can be shared and viewed amongst people, even in real time, I think is pretty cool. I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm signing up right now. <laughs> You've got my money. Um, maybe, I need to, maybe I need to get a commission for all these uh, deals that, that I refer you to. You definitely should. All, all right, but I'm going to give you one okay. that I think, uh, you know, will even us out. Okay. So, so B-U-B-B-L dot U-S. It's a great tip. It really is. All right, so my tip of the week, I'm going to give you two tips, okay? Um, my tip, I've got three tips. First tip is, Let's say, for example, we're closing a deal. It's 5000 or less, right? So we don't want to go through title. We go to the seller. The seller says, I'm not going to deed you the property until, uh, you know, until you pay me. You're like, I'm not paying you until that deed's recorded. So now we've got an issue, right? Now we can do, we can do mobile notary, which is great. But I'd, I'd rather use this company called safefunds.com. Safefunds.com. Have the seller pay for the, the fees and have them help that seller um, sleep better at night closing that deal with you, especially if you're a newbie, right? Like you and I have a big advantage. You know, we're pretty public. We're not going to risk our reputation on a, on a small deal. But if you just started out, this is a great, a great solution. Um, check out safefunds.com. So that's my first tip of the week. All right. That's good. That's good. All right. My second tip of the week is an iOS tip. Okay. Okay. So um, what you can do is you can go into settings, okay? And go into settings and go to general, okay? And then go to accessibility. And right. in accessibility, you're going to see speech, okay? Yeah. When you go to speech, you're going to see a new thing on there called speak screen. Yeah. Speak screen and then highlight content. So yeah. then you can say, hey, Siri, and then you can change the speaking rate below too. So you can say however fast or slower. So now let's say you're in the car. I text you, right? Yeah. Or I box you. Um, or would that, well, actually Vox wouldn't work because it's, it's audio. But um, let's say I text you or let's say that you have this article. You're, you're in a red light. You start reading the article. Now it goes green, right? You say, hey, Siri, speak screen. And she'll read you what's ever on that screen. So I've been using that for a while. And what do you think? I like it. I like it. You know, uh, you don't fact, love it. Last night I was getting out of the car and I accidentally swiped down with my two fingers. I didn't use the Hey Siri. And it's like, there's no content on this page. And it was rambling really fast. I'm like, stop, stop, stop. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, Siri. I like that tip though. That, that is a good tip. That's a good tip. Sorry, good Android, tip. Android users. Yeah. Um, I'm, sure they, I'm sure there's some kind of, you know, Android. Oh, I'm sure that I'm sure that Apple just copied them. You know, I'm sure they did. I, yeah, the Android people are gonna like gonna like email like they, we've been having this for four years. Yeah, right? yeah. So, nice of you guys to finally catch up. Okay, okay. Well, you know, look, I like the walled garden. I'm not afraid to admit it. Hey, did you see the new uh, Max? I have. Are you getting one? Uh, you got right one, now. didn't you? No, 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 not right now. Not right now. I'm, I'm going to get, I'm not going to get a MacBook Pro. Yeah, actually, you and I should discuss it. I, I don't need the MacBook Pro. I've got the Air. I've got the, I like the Air, right? I'm not doing like these heavy processing things. I'm not doing video editing. Yeah. So I want to get the new Air, but I really want the new iMac. I like my iMac. I like it on my, because then I got to get a monitor. I don't know. You got to help me with this thing. So like I, I have, I have the MacBook Pro. So because for a while I had the MacBook Pro and I had an iMac and you know, I would take my MacBook Pro with me and then I would come back and I had a little iMac on my desk and it was kind of good. But managing, to me, managing multiple machines is kind of like a, a mess. You know, like, is it on that machine? Is it on this? I know Dropbox and Google Drive. I know, hell, I, I got it. But I have one machine, it's the MacBook Pro, okay? 
And then I've got the, I've got the Apple monitor, which they don't sell anymore, uh, that they just discontinued this year. I got the 27 inch Apple monitor, but I would even replicate this and just do the Apple or just do a monitor again and power everything off of my MacBook Pro. Um, so there's one machine, it's all condensed, it's all there together. That's kind of like my go-to configuration. All right, I'm sold. I'm going to do it. Will you help me with it? Yeah, yeah. Because I am due for a new computer. Yeah, you are. You are. All right. All right. So I'll do that. All right. My third tip of the week is learn more about MC Laubscher. Unfortunately, he, he had to drop off. Um, I know that he wanted to give out a free book, which is kind of cool for his tip of the week. But um, I'll contact him and see what's going on with that. But go to CashflowNinja.com and learn more about MC his podcast, and um, Infinite Baking. I think it's great. Uh, real quickly, I do want to mention that today's podcast is sponsored by Loan Geek. LoanGeek.io. Get paid, automated. Set it and forget it, and no note setup fees. Collecting money has never been easier. Save time, save money, and actually make money. LoanGeek.io. Okay, back to the podcast, Scott. <laughs> That's funny. I was listening to a podcast the other day and uh, right, right in the middle, like some podcasts, they actually plan, like ours, we plan when, when that stuff will be. And in this one podcast I was listening to, they literally like cut the audio mid-sentence, chink, and put in a commercial. And then they started back up again, mid-sentence again. It was like, come on, you can get better than that, better editing. It's like they just picked the spot right here. What? I forgot what he was saying. Clearly outsourced to a yeah, yeah, yeah. country yeah. for sure. I've been using Loan Geek. It's uh, I, I love it. You know, like you said, no, no, no note setup fees. Competition out there is doing that. Um, you know, I, I think that I think that's a game changer. You're on to Mark. So keep it going. Oh, is MC on? MC back. back. Yes, he came back. I love it at the right time. MC, we've been talking about you. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> That's all right. We were just talking about our tips of the week. I did, I did discuss CashflowNinja.com, and I mentioned that you have a really cool tip. So go ahead. Yeah. Now, if anybody's interested to find out and learn more about the strategy I discussed, please email me at info at CashflowNinja.com. Um, and just, uh, yeah, j put an IBC in the heading and I will uh, ship you out a physical copy of Mr. Nelson Nash's book, Becoming Your Own Banker. Can you say that one more time? That was really generous, MC. Where do, uh, where do, we, where do we email you? Um, at info at cashflowninja.com. I'm doing it right now. And if there was any anything, any questions that you guys had as we uh, discussed this this topic, and feel free to uh, reach out to me. I <laughs> I'll respond anytime. Um, my apologies. I had a little bit of an internet problem here <laughs> in my office, so we were down for a little bit, but we're we're good now. <laughs> yeah, MC. I thought this was a great podcast, Scott. What do you think? I mean, I, I really love the the vehicle. I love the tax advantages. Um, I love the control of it. Um, I'd, I'd like to learn a lot more because you know, you know what Scott and I were talking about was friction. What's the friction with this as far as doing something fast, right, from a paperwork standpoint? Yeah, and that, I think that's where, where I uh, lost you guys. Um, uh, 24 to 48 hours, usually you can pick up the phone and call them. Um, that's how liquid it is. I think uh, when I needed money about two months ago, that was 48 hours from the time that I uh, filled out a quick form and by the time I got the check in my mailbox. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's not like a for, taking a loan from a 401k or an IRA. Some t I know there's a ton of uh, paperwork and stuff that you have to fill in, but this is very, very liquid. Um, and uh, yeah, it, they, they move pretty quickly. Hashtag take my money. <laughs> yeah, no, and I think, and, and that's the message just uh, along with this strategy, uh, you know, 
what I try to do is I try and find as many strategies out there to leverage my capital and have it work as many times over. I think Robert Kiyosaki said, you know, it's not how much money you make, it's how much money you keep and how hard that money keeps on working for you. So I really try to <laughs> have the money work and as many times as possible at the same time. I, I, I couldn't agree more. Scott Todd, you want to take the last word on this? I think, it's, I think it's a great strategy. I think that uh, anything that you can do that will allow you to retain more of your money, as you said, is, is a fantastic strategy. And, you know, I, I do like the concept of, you know, kind of being self-dependent, self, you know, independent, if you will, right? Independent of the normal banks, Wall Street and all the other stuff. I think that's the best way to build long-term wealth. Yeah, I want to thank all the Art of Passive Income listeners. Um, I want to thank MC Laubscher, CashflowNinja.com. And of course, my smarter, better looking co-host, Scott Todd, ScottTodd.net, LandMoto.com. And if you have automating Craigslist postings, why? I don't know. Why not? Go to PostingDomination.com forward slash LandGeek and learn more about me at TheLandGeek.com. I want to thank you, everybody. MC, are we good? We're fantastic. Uh, my apologies for uh, losing you guys for a second, but thank you so much for having me on. Uh, I had a blast. All right. Well, we really appreciate it. And look, the only way, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like an MC Laubscher to come on this podcast is if you do us a little favor, it takes 20 seconds, subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Because MC does his research. He's like, oh, should I even go on this podcast? And then he sees all the reviews. He's like, oh, heck yeah, I'm going on this podcast. This is a good one. So please do that. Subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Um, should we try to do it, Scott, or no? Let's do it. Ready? One, one two, two, three. 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 Let's ring. ring. All right. Thanks, everybody. Not bad. Not bad.